Hi there, my name's Simon DeVette and I'm the Centre Manager of the ABC Assessment Centre. And today we're going to be demonstrating how to construct a 150 millimetre brick and block cavity, including a damp proof course and the correct installation of wall ties with compliant spacing. This video accompanies the forming cavities and correct installation of wall ties short course that we deliver as a centre. And with me today is Ian Mitchell, and Ian's going to help me today with the practical part of the installation. Uh, but before we go on, I'm just going to ask Ian to say just a couple of words uh, about himself and about his construction industry experience. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, uh, my experience is uh, three years as a brickwork apprentice, uh, then another 17 years on the tools, a bit of site management, contracts manager. So bringing a bit of experience for our shooting today. Thank you, Simon. Lovely, thanks, Ian. And uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's move on to the uh, practical side of it, uh, of the installation for forming cavities and installing wall ties. But before we do so, we're gonna just have a look at some health and safety considerations. Some health and safety to take into consideration as a bricklayer on any site. So today we're working at ground level with lots of room to manoeuvre. But just be aware that if you're working up a scaffold, then you've got to take into account a lot more hazards such as slips, trips, falls, bumps, bruises, lacerations, etc. Some masonry materials can be quite heavy, so always adopt the correct lifting techniques and always remember, do not overload yourself. When working with mortar, be aware that you could get dermatitis or skin irritation or cement burns. And you can mitigate against this by wearing the correct PPE at all times and keeping a clean and tidy work area. But all of this information can be found in the RAMs, which you should check before any task. Before we go any further in this video, it's worth pointing out the personal protective equipment or PPE that you must wear when on site. Because without wearing this personal protective equipment, you cannot even get to the point where you're doing the installation similar to that that we're doing on the video today. So what do I mean by PPE? Well, it's a five point PPE. And myself and Ian here have the correct five point PPE, which consists of hard hat, glasses, high-vis vest, gloves, and steel toe cap boots. Remember, there are some jobs on site or some tasks that require additional PPE and information related to these can all be found in the RAMS document. Okay, so quickly to run over the equipment that we'll use today in this forming cavities and correct installation of wall ties video. We'll start with the things that have to be in any bricklayer's kind of tool bag. You've got your levels, ideally short and long, so a 600 and a 1200 mil. You've got tape measure. A tape measure could be a standard tape measure or one with the gauging already done on it. Obviously your, your trowel. Uh, in this case, we've got a 11 inch Marshalltown trowel. Got your string line and your jointing iron as well. Uh, moving on, you've got a hammer and bolster, again, to cut blocks if you're cutting blocks and, uh, and bricks manually. You may have other means of cutting masonry products, things like a block cutter, things like a block splitter. Also, you may have access to a table saw or a clipper saw or even an angle grinder. But for the purposes of today's demonstration and, and what we're doing today, we're just using a, a hammer and bolster, good old fashioned method. We've got a flexible DPC roll, and we've also got wall ties. Now these ones are uh, specialist for 150 mil cavity, which is what we'll be doing today. And they are actually um, marked where the embedment should go into both masonry skins. The final thing that we have is a mortar board. This is absolutely essential for anyone working in the brick trade. This one's been kindly donated by Grayson. Okay, so before we wet lay any bricks, the first thing we need to do is a process called setting out or dry bonding. So why do we do this? Isn't it just a waste of time? Well, no, it really isn't. Setting out is vital for working out how we maintain the bond throughout the facade 
as well as how many bricks we need for any given run of masonry. Especially when we need to take into account openings, reveals, brick piers, and other special details, for example. As with everything in construction, good preparation is vital. Therefore, get used to setting out on every job you do. Ian is setting out the block work and in doing so is setting a string line at the height of the first course of blocks. Now that the block work is laid out to the line, Ian is taking a tape measure and he's marking the 150 millimeter cavity. It will adjust the facing brickwork into position so that that 150 millimeter cavity is retained both on the straight side and also on the corner and he's taking a straight edge in order to mark the front side of the bricks. This will make sure that the cavity width is taken into account plus the width of the brick for the facing brickwork. To ensure the brickwork is at an exact 90 degrees, Ian is now taking a corner angle or steel angle to make sure that it's exactly a perpendicular 90 degree angle. Now that the setting out is done, the next step is to build up one course of block work and three courses of brickwork, which as you know, should be the same height exactly. In order to achieve this, especially for the brickwork, we start at the corners. Applying mortar in your perp joint or buttering up your bricks in this way guarantees adhesion between the two adjacent bricks and make sure you keep a consistent 10mm joint throughout. Notice that Ian is now laying the bricks against the line that he marked out earlier during the setting out process. Ian is also levelling the bricks. Establishing a level first course is fundamental because it's the base from which the rest of our brickwork is going to be built off of. Ian is finishing forming the external corner on the first course by laying the two bricks on the other side of the return, using the same method that we've just seen. Now that Ian's laid the entire first corner, it's time to build up a second course in the corner again, making sure that we retain the half lap bond or stretcher bond pattern that we have for the facing brickwork. To complete this corner on the second course of brickwork, Ian is now laying two additional bricks. Notice how he's filling in the full frog of brick below when he's bedding the bricks into mortar.
Notice Ian is plumbing and leveling as he goes, which is absolutely fundamental if you want to be building a straight wall. In order to complete the process of racking back and create a corner with three courses, Ian is now adding a further three bricks to the corner to form the third course. Racking back is a technique where a corner is formed and the brickwork is staggered by half a brick per course, as you can see from the bricks on the left hand side. We do this so we can run the string line from one corner to another and lay an entire course to that height. Hence the expression, laying to a line. The next step is to set up our string line horizontally at the height of the first brick, making sure that it is nice and taut all the way along so that we can lay the entire first course using that string line as a guide. So now you see Ian laying the first course of brickwork on a fresh bed of mortar with a correct bedding technique and laying to the line. Ian has now reset the height of the horizontal string line to the second course of brickwork and he's done that by raising it up the rack back corner that we formed earlier. Care must be taken to ensure that you maintain the half lap or stretcher bond throughout the run of brickwork. Now as you see Ian's laying the third course of brickwork and this will coincide with the top of the course of block work in the internal leaf. Once you've laid several courses of brickwork and before the mortar goes off, it's a good idea to take your jointing iron and point the work that you've already done. A quick tip related to this. Remember to joint your perps first and then run through your bed joints afterwards. So, once you've got to this point, the next step is to lay your DPC onto both skins. As I mentioned before, DPC stands for Damp Proof Course, and it's essential that it's present in order to combat rising damp. It's reasonably easy to lay because the standard width is the same as bricks and blocks, and you just cut it to length from a roll based on the length of the brickwork or blockwork run that you've just laid. The application is very, very simple. All you do is lay your DPC on top of half a bed of mortar on top of the brickwork or block work that you've just laid, but importantly, on both skins. Ian is now demonstrating how to lay a fresh bed of mortar and lay on the DPC on the brickwork course.
apply a small amount of mortar to the overlapping run of DPC at corners to avoid moisture penetration as Ian is doing here. As you see, we've now built up two courses of block work and corresponding six courses of brickwork. When installing wall ties, you must observe the minimum embedment into each skin. And that means that you have to have the right tie for the cavity width that you are forming. Now this is minimum 50 millimeter embedment into each masonry skin. Evidently, we're building up the block work first and therefore you will see the third course of block work going on on top of the second course as well, on top of the bed of mortar. As you can see, we've built up the third course of block work and we've also inserted three wall ties into that horizontal section. We've set up also a line and Ian is now going to lay to that line and he's going to lay a fresh bed of mortar into the frogs of the brickwork below and covering the surface or the minimum embedment part of the wall tie into the outer leaf. Evidently, this is just to show you the process but you'll be doing this many, many times as you go up the building and as work progresses. As you can see from this diagram, the standard wall tie spacing in a masonry infill panel is at maximum 900 horizontal and 450 vertical centers. And this is in a diamond formation. The only exception to this is when you're around openings or expansion joints, in which case they should be located one on top of the other and at maximum 225 millimeter centers. Just a quick reminder that when you get to the end of your shift, uh, when you finish doing your work for the day, you should always cover your work because as a bricklayer, you know you should never be laying wet bricks. So in wet weather especially, always cover your work, either with a hessian sheet uh, and especially when you've loaded out, these brick jackets are really, really, really handy um, and they cover all of the, uh, the bricks and blocks that you have out on the scaffold overnight. So now we've got our cavity constructed, our section of the cavity with our bricks and our blocks. We've done our layer of DPC, a ground level, and we've also got our ties in as well. So Ian, uh, what would you say are your top tips for what we've just done uh, forming a cavity wall? Okay, thank you, Simon. Um, obviously, we're going to keep to the, uh, the, the technical drawings, making sure that we are spacing the wall ties as per the drawings. DPC laps should be 100 mil on the corners, 150 mil of his intermediate lap. Uh, wall ties correctly positioned, wall ties nice and clean, keep the cavity clean. Uh, a tip for that maybe to uh, when you lay your mortar bed, the inside of it needs to be feathered back so that on compression of the brick, it doesn't fall into the cavity. It's obviously uh, a dirty cavity is not what we need. We need the weep holes to work properly. We need the cavity to be clean and generally keep to the specification on the drawings and your workstation nice, clean and tidy and you should do a great job. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, thanks Ian for your top tips and uh, thank you everyone for watching this video.